Hey guys. guys. Oh. <laughs> hey guys, I'm John P. I'm Kelly Lewis. I think we're both excited about our next guest. We are guest. indeed. We are here at the National Restaurant Association at the LRS booth behind us. Can I tell a story? Okay. So you guys know that when we do the show, we have a run sheet, right? So yes. we, we have notes on the people who are visiting and things like that. We have fully researched everyone who That's comes right. in. That's right. We have, we, we have the guest name and their title. We have the company details yep. and conversation, talking points and things. You have to do this to stay organized. So we have Dar Darnell Holloway here with us from Yelp. And here's the awesome thing. In the notes it says, it's Yelp. <laughs> we all know Yelp. Yelp is awesome. Well, thank you all for having me here. We are so you glad you joined. You have to start off with that. I have but to. Before we get into Yelp, though, Darnell is so awesome. He was actually... I just want you to retell the story of the green M&Ms. Oh, yeah, that was a good story. I mean, we just have to talk about that. Yeah, so, you know, and I, I might totally butcher this story, but, uh, you know, <laughs> we one don't of the let facts get in the way of a good story around <laughs> right, here, okay? Right. Uh, so, you know, one of the one of the famous rock bands, I, I want to say it might have been Van Halen or one of those. It things. was definitely Van Halen. Okay, so well, we'll yeah. say for the sake of the story it was <laughs> Van Halen. But one of the original rock groups, they basically... Um, were requesting at every stop that they want a bowl of M&Ms right. with all the brown ones taken out. It's right? something that everybody talks about, everybody makes fun of. It's like of you're such a diva, yeah. right? Yeah. You want so, but there was actually some strategy, strategery, strategery, strategery oh. <laughs> behind this. And so uh, the reason why they did it was it would raise a red flag with the sound setup. So basically every every place they would go, the sound requirements would be very specific for them to sound yeah. great. Some of the venues got it right, some of the venues did not. So they give them a long list. So they gave them a, a contract writer and somewhere buried deep in the writer was, we want this bowl of M&Ms with all the brown ones taken out. So what that signaled to them when they got to each venue, if the M&Ms were removed properly, they knew, hey, these they guys are the on list. it. Hey, they read the writer. That makes perfect sense actually. I'm yeah. going to start, start doing, doing that. Like that. No, Not I'm going to. Uh, all right, <laughs> let's such talk a diva. about... <laughs> Shall we talk about Yelp now? Let's talk about Yelp. But you know what? Okay, so we use Yelp religiously. Yes. You know, we travel. Our travel schedule is ridiculous. It really is. We travel like 70% of our time. Yeah. yeah. So one thing that's difficult about that kind of travel Eating. schedule, you don't know where to go. Well, you used to not know where to go. But yep. now we don't worry about it because we just pull up Yelp and we like sort by distance yep. and, and we sort now. by rating. I love that new feature. Open if now, price, and then bang, there's like five options. Yeah. Okay, do you want pizza? Do you want this? Do you want that? And we trust Yelp. The We've had great thing, experience. Before you get to your question, because I know what you're going to ask. Okay. The one thing I want you guys to do is add an option like he doesn't eat vegetables. Yeah, we need to sort by no vegetable menus. Exactly. He doesn't eat vegetables at all. Anyway, get to your question. Okay, so my question is this. We, and I think that generally our audience is really familiar with what benefits we get from Yelp, yeah, from using Yelp. as a customer. But you happen to be here roaming around and the National Restaurant Association show. So this that is an tells inside me industry show. Right. You must be talking to them about something different than, than than we would normally focus on. True or false? Right. Well, see, you hit the nail on the head. There's two audiences on Yelp, so to speak. We've got consumers or Yelpers, as we like to call them, the people that write reviews, also look up information on local businesses. And then, of course, we have the businesses that are listed on the site. So just to put it in perspective, in January of this year, we hit a new milestone with 100 million unique visitors coming wow, to the desktop wow. site. That's fantastic. Another 10 million using Yelp's mobile app. So we can talk about that in a little bit. But, you know, there's also all the businesses listed on the site. And so, uh, By the way, can I just be pissed and ranty a little bit? Because my brother here. Oh, somehow no. made Yelp elite, and I did not. And I do more always. reviews than he does. Anyway, that's in my in the, in the rant. I don't know that he can do anything. Damn you, that Kirk guy. Pose. Well, I, I don't have any control over that. But if you're yeah. interested in learning about what it means to be Yelp Elite, you can always go to Yelp.com/elite, and there's a whole landing page there that tells you information about the Elite. Very squad politically correct answer. Yes, you that, can nominate yourself good. for oh, the next I? go round of selections. Right. Oh, no promises on whether or not you make it, but just can I get everybody to nominate me for it? <laughs> and that, that's kind of like cheating, right? Anyways, please go on. So you know there's 
a site for business owners on Yelp, biz.yelp.com. There's a ton of free tools that businesses can use to uh, check traffic to their page, add content to their page, photos, which are very important in the restaurant industry, and also respond to their reviews, which is something that we really recommend businesses get in the habit yeah. of doing. Because, I mean, here's the thing, with the way that the social media landscape has evolved, businesses now have some direct insight into the conversations that are happening about their business. So right. it's important, especially for folks in the restaurant industry, to pay attention to those conversations, and then of course respond to those reviews. Uh, Positive or negative, should they respond to all of them? Should, how, what, what would be your response strategy if you were a restaurateur? Yeah, well, you know, you can respond to both positive as well as negative reviews. On the positive side, you don't really need to say a ton. You Yeah, really only, not like everyone, but. Right, you, well, you really already won those people over as a customer, so yeah. it's just an opportunity to thank them for the business, yeah. introduce yourself as the, the restaurant owner um, or manager. And on the negative side, uh, here's the thing, it's important to keep in mind that in general, you know, people are talking about their experiences day in, day out. About 79% of the reviews on Yelp are actually three stars or higher, right? So I think that's there's a common myth that people are more likely to share negative experiences. It does happen, but it's completely normal to well, get. a lot uh, of people put more focus on the negative. <laughs> right, right. And, and it's completely normal if a business does have negative reviews, but being diplomatic is the best strategy. Um, you just want to think about what your yeah. policies are for face-to-face -face interactions. Apply the same logic to a written response. Is there Currently, a way, or are you guys thinking about doing it uh, for restaurant owners to offer to see the feedback and then offer coupons or anything else to, to go out to that customer? That's a great question. We actually recommend that uh, if businesses are responding to reviews, whether positive or negative, they don't offer any sort of incentive one way or another. Um, really, what you want to do, especially in the situation of a negative review, is thank the person for their feedback, address whatever their concerns are, and then move forward from there. And doing that is something that we've seen a lot of uh, the successful businesses on Yelp implementing when it comes to achieving a strong rating on the site. Now we do have some options for restaurants to post uh, deals and gift certificates as well, uh, where people can actually buy those directly from a business's Yelp listing or also on the mobile app. And those are just good touch points to attract additional business. By the way, I want to talk about the mobile app, but I actually just thought of a weird kind of question. I don't know if you have a, an opinion on this um, officially from Yelp's perspective, but just a few weeks ago, Samsung got busted for paying people to write negative reviews about their competitors. Right. And I'm wondering, I would think that would be much easier to do if you were in, in the, uh, if you will, in the restaurant business. I mean, what do you do when someone tells you they really suspect that reviews are not accurate, they're not true? Like maybe they said something like, oh, my waiter, Cherry, was horrible. And they're like, we literally don't have an employee by that name. How do you deal with, with, with false reviews? We take a very strong stance when it comes to uh, fake reviews, as you alluded to. It's uh, I didn't hear about Samsung, that's unfortunate. Oh, yeah. but there's a couple of things that we do to really make sure that we're displaying the most useful information to our consumer audience. And so the first thing is that we have an automated software system built on the site, which is our review filter. I was actually uh, recently just talking to uh, Jeremy Stoffman, our CEO and co-founder about this. We put a video out on YouTube with him telling the history of the review filter. And he pointed out that when we were building Yelp, the common behavior pattern was that businesses would just go write testimonials for themselves or yeah. you know, they would maybe go write some reviews, negative reviews for their competitors, and that was just kind of how you won in the online world. And so understanding that that behavior pattern exists on the internet in general, that's why we decided to create this Yelp filter way back when, review filter as I uh, should say. And so ultimately it's a computer algorithm that looks at a wide range of information associated with every Yelp user and every review it looks at that information and figure out, figures out whether or not a particular Yelp user's review will be stored in the filtered sections, we like to call it, or displayed on a business's page, which will then count towards the overall rating. So that's the first sort of mechanism that we have in place when it comes to quality control. The second thing is that we also uh, recently launched a consumer alerts program. And so we have people that actually run sting operations at Yelp, believe it or not, yeah. that uh, you know will respond to some of these Craigslist ads that are asking people to write reviews for 25 bucks a pop. Oh. If we catch businesses doing that red-handed, then we'll put a consumer alert on their page and we'll say oh, that okay. we caught somebody red-handed. I like that. Yeah. They should be punished for that. Uh, okay. 
<laughs> anyway. I was going to say how, but never mind. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> and, then, and then finally, you know, we do have a set of review guidelines on the site as well, which are enforced by our user support team. So you know, generally speaking, we let people exercise their yeah. freedom of speech, but sometimes things get posted that warrant evaluation and yeah. also removal. So for example, we don't allow uh, threats or harassment in the content of reviews. They have to be a first-hand experience. And then also, if there is a clear conflict of interest, let's say restaurant owner A goes over to restaurant yeah. owner B's, Yelp listing starts blasting with you know, negative reviews, things like that, don't really have a place on Yelp. So if yeah. people flag those reviews, we can evaluate them and then take them down. Got it. Okay. So you guys have been around for a long time. Uh, in, in when the mobile app scene came out, you, know, you were quick to, to have a mobile app and make sure that people had access that way. What do you see in the future? in terms of technology, the mobile space, what's coming? That's and when am I going to be able to publish my reviews directly from my mobile app? <laughs> you know, that that's kind of the, the million dollar question. I get that a lot these days. But I mean, just to go back to, to your question, um, you know, you're right. We, we were founded in 2004 and we really started out mainly as a desktop experience and then we developed an app also and, and the app has really exploded in terms of uh, I would say use and overall functionality for consumers. So vital for consumers, I think, you know, as opposed to just the desktop experience. Right. Well, and here's an interesting statistic for you. Also, earlier we talked about the traffic. So 102 million people per month using the desktop site, 10 million people per month on average using Yelp's mobile app. But 45% of all searches on Yelp are now coming from mobile. Wow. And we find that these people have a greater sense of urgency. In fact, every yeah. second now a call is being generated to a local business or GPS directions are being mapped out to a local business through one of the mobile apps. So I am surprised that it's 100 million desktop and 10 million on mobile. I honestly would have guessed it was the opposite because that's the reason I asked my question. Like, I'm always using it mobile. The only time I go to the website is when I have you like 20 friggin' or... drafts and I can't get them to to publish until I go there and just say publish, publish, publish. So, yeah. I mean, a lot of times if I'm traveling, I might only have something like the iPad with me sure. and I can't publish on it. So sure. I'm surprised that, that that's the... Well, and also to your question earlier too about when are you gonna be able to publish reviews, you know, that's something that we've really evaluated um, pretty, pretty consistently. And, you know, just kind of as an aside, I think one of the things that we really looked at is review quality. And so uh, what we wanted to avoid was to have people writing reviews and text speak, for example, figured, yeah. uh, winking smiley yeah. face, BTW, LOL. Um, and so, you know, as... Uh, or I kind of assumed it was like to make, uh, to make institute a cooling it? off period. Yeah. Well, you can draft a review from mobile. Right. Yeah, but I want to publish. I figure you wouldn't let me publish because you want me to cool off, off if yeah. I said something too positive or too negative and then I have to go review it later or something. I don't know. I didn't know why you did it. Well, you can, though, post a quick tip. And so that's what I want to let you all know about. I'm not sure if you've played around with that feature yet. I'm not. But uh, we found quick tips to be useful ways for our mobile audience to give people just a short snippet of information okay. uh, once they're checking into a business, for example, on the mobile app. Okay. I we're, think get, we're out of time. We're getting the wrap up. Yes, we so are. Unfortunately, we, we would love to talk to you more. Oh, we but can we talk have all to day. let you go roam the floor and do your thing and talk to <laughs> talk to businesses. Absolutely. Well, it's a pleasure. It's been a pleasure, yes. I should say, speaking with you guys. And thank you again for having me here. Well, thank thanks for you coming, for coming on. on. Thank okay. Thank you guys for watching and stick around for more coverage from NRA right here. at LRS. Yeah, all those abbreviations <laughs> and Geek Beat. She's Callie Lewis. He's John P. Bye.